Hello guys, welcome to Chasing the Murderer, talking news. Guys, we're still on this crazy case with the Lori Ballow and it's just there's new information coming out almost every day. And now we're starting to see Melanie Boudreaux, which is Lori Ballow's niece, begin to speak openly uh, by her husband's side. In fact, I believe that Dateline, I'm not positive, or Inside Edition, one of them have a story coming out tomorrow, I believe. But Lori comes from a Mormon family. You know, they're all pretty attractive people, I think. And they seem to have grown up pretty decent as far as I can tell. We're not getting a lot of background on their, you know, how they were raised. But we do know that they were raised in California. A lot of people are saying that they're having trouble locating the birth certificate of her brother, Alex Cox. And so they're throwing a lot of suspicion that he might have been adopted. But I doubt that. So other people that are included are Summer and Adam and a few others that we really don't need to bring into this because they're trying to just live their lives. But one important uh, sibling involved with this family, her name is Stacy. Her full name is Stacy Lynn Cox. She is the mother of Melanie, what we know her as Boudreaux. I'm sorry, Melanie, we're referring to you as that. We know you got remarried um, not that long ago. But using that, I can tell it's probably okay to use that because she's still using that last name on Facebook and she has been posting messages on Facebook, kind of trying to give her side of the story of what's been happening. So according to Melanie Boudreaux, she had nothing to do with the attack against her ex-husband, Brandon Boudreaux, who we know, if you're kept up with the story, and if you don't, then go refer to my older videos. Brandon had an attack against him while he was on his way to the gym, I believe. He was on the way to the gym. I still haven't got that straight. Um, but the important information is that his Tesla was shot at and a bullet hit just inches from his head. Melanie's ex-husband said that he actually hired a private investigator who looked into it and it turned out to be they suspected that it was Alex Cox that was shooting at his Tesla. And as this Lori Vallow story starts to um, uncover more and more, um, including the past or future, we're finding out that there's actually about five deaths that are quite questionable that surround Lori Vallow and her family. So the number one person was Stacy Cox. She was only 31 years old. And supposedly uh, she died of a diabetic shock. Uh, what we're hearing is they're really not certain what happened to her. Also, we heard that Alex Cox was in the house at the time that it happened. We're also hearing rumors that he might have spent money on her uh, card while she was deceased in her own house. After Stacy's death, there was Joseph Ryan, which is Lori Vallow's third husband. Guys, forgive me if I get the numbers wrong. There's a lot going on. I do believe he is the third husband. He is the father of Tylee Ryan, the 17-year-old that is missing. And Alex Cox attacked him while they were going through a divorce. I think they went through the divorce and they were uh, battling over custody over um, his daughter, Tylee. Alex left Texas, went to wherever Joseph was wearing, living at the time, attacked him with a taser gun. Witnesses seen it. He ended up at the hospital and then later Alex Cox admitted that he was trying to kill him. So Lori Vallow's brother now has been seen twice with a death and then an attempted death. So just over 10 years later, Joseph Ryan actually died and they um, said it was of a heart attack. But since the story has come out, people are kind of questioning whether that is that or not because uh, Lori Vallow and Joseph Ryan when they were married, and it's around 2002, they lived in Driftwood, Texas, in this huge ma um, mansion. So this mansion was, what was the address? I've got this in memory, guys. So I think it's 5 
26 Oakland, I think is where they said that house was. It sat on three acres. The house was massive, guys. And so when they divorced, Lori claimed, and I'm going to bring the list up for you in just a second, that she was not able to survive on the amount of money that she was living on and that she required, you know, far more. I think it was, let's see, I wanted to pull this list up for you. So this is Lori's list that she turned in during her bankruptcy. She said that her rent was $1,900, her electricity was $400, water $50, phone $50, home maintenance $50, food $700, clothing $100, laundry $100, medical and dental $250 charitable contributions was $400 homeowner insurance was 80 auto insurance was 80 and car payment of $500 and then her work expenses which were rounded off to about $1600 so clearly once Lori Val well it was Lori Ryan at the time was married to Joseph Ryan she was used to living a very high scale life really the thing is is she wasn't working she she lists her occupation as a hairstylist so she worked off and on with that is what we're finding but when she had tylee she took about a year off is what we're hearing at the time of bankruptcy and while she's going through divorce um, joseph ryan is fighting hard to get custody of his daughter and so Lori has many documents out there, but they all kind of contradict one another from where she lies. And she said that she was making about 3000 a week, sometimes 3000 a month, sometimes 5000 a month. Nobody's really clear how much she made. But she was fighting to keep Tylee, and a lot of people believe she was wanting Tylee more for the money than anything else. Because she was fighting hard against Joseph Ryan over the custody of their daughter and she was fighting for more money. While she was married to Joseph Ryan and going through a divorce, this is about the same time that Lori Vallow is seen in the beauty pageant as uh, she's competing. And then you have the Wheel of Fortune where she claims she was on the show and won $17,000. The thing is, is nobody's been able to pull that clip up and that's kind of shocking. So around May 18th of 2005, it says that Lori and Joseph's divorce is finalized. But like I mentioned, Joseph is fighting tooth and nail trying to get his daughter. And there's a time where Lori's brother, Alex Cox, and a friend told this story that, you know, he had a family, um, something family to take care of and that he was leaving for a period of time. So he left wherever he was at the time and headed to Texas and that's where Joseph was. So sometime in that period of time there, and I have all those details in other videos, guys. I just can't, I can't keep that much information in my head. Anyways, Alex Cox drives from wherever he was last to Texas finds wherever Joseph Ryan is and tased him twice. Um, somehow Joseph was able to get up and run and escape Alex. There were witnesses that said that they seen this happen and Alex actually did spend about 90 days in jail because of this incident. So why Alex Cox was in jail, he was sending letters out. He mentioned his mother's name, Janice. At the time, I wasn't sure who she was. And he mentions that he's wanting a picture and the tag number. He needs help locating where Joseph Ryan is when he gets out. Alex actually did, uh, when he went to court, admit that he was trying to kill Joseph Ryan. I want you guys to remember that because I think that plays an important role as to why he isn't here any longer. So it's February 2006 and all this crazy stuff going on and now Lori Vallow has met another love of her life, Charles Vallow, who is a Catholic. But when he marries Lori, he converts to Mormon. Now together the couple had Colby, they had Tylee, 
and then they decided to adopt a family baby that was going through a lot of things so it's the grandchild of Kay Woodcock and Larry Woodcock you'll hear their name many times and JJ is just he's a very young he's he's an infant when they adopt him Charles Bello is very responsible and uh, he loves this child more than anything as far as everybody knew they thought that Lori Vallow loved this child just as much as Charles did but during their marriage there were some crazy things happening so um, I know at one point they moved from the United States to Hawaii and they tried to start up a business and it's a juice business it doesn't go well and they end up moving back to the States that's about the time things start to go crazy again also in between this timeline and these uh, events Joseph Ryan which is about nine or ten years later has passed away and it is said that he passed away of a heart attack he's cremated but his death does raise suspicions and this is because we hear um, I mean, we know that Joseph Ryan was claiming that Lori had mental conditions. We know that the sister says that she started to worry about Lori's mental condition. And after many years of being married to Charles Vallow, Charles Vallow files for divorce. And he, too, is saying that Lori Vallow is suffering from mental health issues. I think I forgot to mention with Joseph Ryan back in 2009, Lori is acting like she's above the law even back then. So in a civil court finds that Lori, finds Lori in contempt and charges her with judicial interference and disobeying a child custody agreement with Joseph Ryan. And this is in regards to Tylee. So I wanted you guys to take that note and understand this is not when we get deeper into the story, we realize that she has, you know, this thing where she thinks she's above the law and that, you know, she can do what she wants. You can also see that she'll do what she has to do in order to fight for her children. What that reason is, is it for her love for her children? Some people don't believe that is the case. A lot of people feel like it's a way to hold something over other people because there was a time where Joseph Ryan before he passed away felt so threatened that he made dismissals in the third court of appeals against Lori Bello so there's something that she's doing to anyone that stands up you know to Lori she basically has a way to threaten these people it seems and so this is important as we move forward here I do want to mention that uh, Melanie marries Brandon in 2008 and we know that they have four children together and I do not know what to think about Melanie simply because of how far she went and was involved with her aunt and how deep she got into these books and their beliefs and the fact that she moved away from her children and the biggest thing that draws questions is Brandon Boudreaux when he had an attack a threat on his life by Melanie Boudreaux's family so there was life insurance involved with Brandon Boudreaux, just like most every case from here on. And Brandon was so scared for his life, he went into hiding. But Melanie is sharing um, a lot of stuff on Facebook. Like I mentioned earlier, she's kind of reaching out to people and telling them, look, what you're seeing is not true. Well, Melanie, from most people's standpoint, it looks like you got washed up into that and you're trying to deny it. It'd be better if you just come forward and tell the complete truth. Of course, Melanie Boudreaux says that she knows some things that she can't tell people. So hopefully, 
we will find out the truth of whether Melanie had played part in this or not because it's very hard if you don't know her how, what to think but the evidence that you're seeing and not just through media I mean through affidavits it appears that you know Melanie was lying to police that doesn't make you look good she has fibbed she has manipulated and she kind of abandoned her children so we don't know why all this happened we haven't had reasoning from her mouth other than on the affidavits this doesn't look good and I'm going to have to tell you if it was me I would understand why people are seeing what they see so um, Melanie ended up getting divorced from Brandon Boudreaux she moves with Lori later on which we're going to cover but I want to go ahead and kind of mention what happens here right now because it's so much information so Melanie gives up the lies that she knows moves with her aunt her her uncle Alex Cox to Arizona and that's where the children were last seen okay guys so I want you guys to remember that as we push forward so where we're at and the story is Lori Vallow and Charles Vallow have moved back to the States and at this point Lori Vello is starting to get into these doomsday books that are written by this man named Chad Daybell and Corey according to someone that's very close to Lori they she said that she got so deep into this that she was buying these books and that she even bought you know copies for her as well so about 2017 there is some important notes I want to share with you so Chad shares in his blog a lot of what's going on in his life and we got kind of a clue of where he kind of started getting brainwashed I believe this is speculation but I, I feel like this is strong enough evidence to say so that he's getting brainwashed with how Lori thinks and believes so Chad writes and announces on a blog in 2016 um, and he shared something um, on the release of his autobiography living on the edge of heaven he discusses two near-death experiences and his interactions with deceased relatives and at the beginning of this book he dedicates it to his wife Tammy who he calls his one and only now my research kind of if it's correct says that Lori kind of started getting really obsessed by these books back in 2015 but you know that's just there's no proof to that so Chad writes in this book that he had visions of himself as an older man helping build the new Jerusalem and he says quote I appear to be in better shape in the future than I am now probably due to lack of fast food in Zion and in quote to me this sudden change in health inquiry especially uh, is a big sign in my opinion that Lori is in his head because let me tell you I've seen Lori in several interviews where she speaks of health or gems and so this is a priority in her life looking at Chad Daybell through his life he's always been about big Sunday dinners and you know food as a way of comfort and coming together but suddenly health is now something he's mentioning which is very odd for him so another important thing that's happening around this time is it's the summer of 2017 okay guys and this is where Chad is doing podcasts this is where he meets what we hear for the first time Melanie Gibb who is also uh, part of that group with preparing the people so that summer Chad meets the author and podcaster Melanie Gibb for the first time after he speaks at a camp out in northern Utah 
So I'm very curious about these campouts that they speak about and their locations. It's sometime during that point that Melanie Gibb actually invites Chad Daybell to come speak in her hometown of either Mesa or Mesa. I don't, I don't know how they pronounce it in Arizona. So it's during this time that Chad Daybell is really doing quite a few podcasts for, with preparing the people. He's discussing things like the topics on microchip implants. Um and fulfilling prophecy. He also discuss, or discusses exciting prophecies and expectations of the sacred records, which is also discussed by Sean Little Bear. So what's interesting on September 4th of 2017, there's a, a preparing a people or the people uh, Zion camp podcast. And so this podcast is mostly, um, with Michael Kennedy, who is supposed to be a direct descendant of the prophet Joseph Smith. So these are interesting to me because I'm looking for clues if the kids were to still be alive that maybe someone's hiding them out. But according to a lot of people, they really don't believe that the kids are any, you know, they're here any longer. So I don't know. About this time going on, it's Tylee's birthday. So Lori posts happy birthday for her on Instagram. Now I do want to mention that Julie Rowe, which is Chad's old friend, plus the woman that he was helping uh, publish books for, said at some period after all this, because I don't want to forget to tell you guys, he kind of parts ways with preparing the people. And it's probably when the media... <laughs> Uh, starts picking up on his story I would have to say but during this time Julie says that preparing the people are all about Chad Daybell so Julie is kind of talking to Chad Daybell off and on and she knows about and of Lori um, Ballow at the time now according to a few articles and few reports say that on December 4th of 2019, Lori did her first podcast, but some things say other dates. So it's kind of confusing to know exactly um, the dates, especially since the podcasts have been kind of redistributed through the, throughout the internet and they're kind of being deleted. So I want to ask you guys to work with me on these dates because I haven't had time to re-update this. But I think this is pretty accurate. So on December 5th of 2018, Chad and Lori are both on the same episode of Preparing the People podcast. And that's time to worry you up. So it's really about this time. So you have Joseph Ryan that has passed away. He's passed away about this time. So it's 2018. 2019. We, he, you know... Lori and Chatter are getting to be big names and often speaking on the podcast of preparing the people. There's a point where uh, Lori and Charles are going through a very bitter divorce and uh, there's times that she's leading him on to stick around and a lot of people believe that she was doing that in order to keep her hands on his life insurance which totaled about a million dollars. This makes complete sense now that everything's coming out because we're finding out that she actually attempted to change his password, you know, to keep her as the beneficiary on that life insurance policy. Charles Vallow, he just, he, he caved into her time and time again, and that's according to Kay Woodcock, his sister, you know, she would lead him on and then she would push him away and she would lead him on and push him away and then he would file for divorce and then cancel it and this was a back and forth uh thing for a period of time till finally on july so at the very beginning of this month charles is really starting to wake up and he tells his attorney he says you know i'm afraid i'm going to be killed and i know who's going to do it i'm telling you steve so that if something happens to me, I want to make sure you let everyone know that something happens, I'm killed, that it's my wife Lori and her brother Alex Cox. So, I mean, obviously Charles, you hear where he's actually trying to message all of Lori's friends, including Melanie Gibb at one point, 
and they're all making him seem crazy but who's crazy now guys so on July 11th Charles Vallow drives to Lori Vallow's home to pick JJ up for school only to get into what they said was an altercation which a lot of people do not believe Lori's brother Alex Cox was there he claimed that Charles and Lori got in an argument there was a bat drawn that Lori and the kids left while Charles and Alex remained behind in the home they continued to argue and at some point he said that Charles lifted a bat and struck Alex over the head or behind the head at that point Alex said he ran to his room and got a gun and shot Charles because he was fearing for his life it was in self-defense but it's very clear that this is a complete lie if you haven't seen the um, police footage of where they come out after this happened it's pretty graphic you can actually see Charles lying in the house there it's just hard to take in that murder is so easily done and easily gotten away with listen Alex Cox had already threatened one husband he had tased him and even said that he tried to kill him Alex Cox was around his sister Stacy Cox when she passed away supposedly was spending money while she lied deceased and it was her money to cut this uh, story short because we've gone over this a billion times we don't know if the kids were there when it happened and we feel like this could be a key as to why the kids are not being found but then there's other reasons as well as Lori being vindictive against the Woodcocks because once Charles passed away the, one of the first things she went after was that one million dollar life insurance policy and when she did, she found out that she was no longer the beneficiary and that Kay Woodcock was. So this is in the month of October. Now they didn't speak to uh, JJ but a few times and it wasn't until November 26th that they started to figure out something wasn't right and they called the police for a welfare check. And that's when we really started to see that these kids there was nobody really in their lives for quite a bit distance except for the Woodcocks they were trying to be in their lives and Colby was trying in between his new busy life because he's starting a new family to try to contact Tylee but nobody can get a hold of JJ or Tylee so we're running into November going into December and nobody has seen the children when the police come out they get a bunch of lies from Melanie Gibb Melanie Boudreaux, Alex Cox, Lori, and guess who else? Chad Daybell. Now, in October, right after Brandon Boudreaux was shot at, it's just a, a few, few, what? Uh, it was the second, and then the tenth, Tammy Daybell passes away. And it was odd because they say that Tammy had no evident health conditions and when she went to bed she went to bed coughing and she never woke up but something happened to her just a few days before and that she had a paintball gun pointed at her when she was unloading groceries in her driveway this gun described by Tammy she posted uh, her experience on Facebook she called the police it's the very same description almost that Brandon Boudreaux gave just a few weeks before, a few days before. And so there was this Jeep that a lot of people have seen Alex driving. And Brandon Boudreaux told police after his car was shot at, his Tesla, that he believed it was Alex Cox. And they were able to put up pull up footage from the storage of uh, 
a Jeep seat, most likely, and a tire that was put into Lori Vallow's storage. And this is on October 2nd, I think, and 3rd. I don't have the dates exact because I don't have those notes. I've already covered this in earlier videos. But regardless, there was a tire and Jeep seat that they seen them toting in and out of that storage unit. And they believe that it was coming out of the Jeep that Alex Cox was driving that actually belonged to Charles Vallow. And when he died, uh, Tylee Ryan inherited that Jeep. So all of this stuff is starting to pile up and people wanna know what's taking so long. Well, it's because this, this case is so complex investigators know that they do have a limited time but they need to take their time in order to collect the evidence they need in order to bring justice because there's a lot of questionable things going on around uh, Lori and Chad but that's not it guys after these guys are being investigated by the police Chad Daybell is lying to the police along with Lori. His wife hasn't even been dead that long. And he's already moving in with Lori. They get married on November 5th in Hawaii. And in December, Alex Cox is also deceased. His stepson, see Alex had married Zuma taken her last name in Las Vegas which is strange they call 9-1 to say that he was lying on the floor unresponsive in his own feces he was not revived and I wish they had been able to revive him but the child that uh, called 9-1 was just scared to death um, anyways he didn't make it so now that Alex is out of the picture the kids are completely missing. No one can find them. There's absolutely no witnesses that could stand against Lori in any way. We all know that Alex Cox, if he was cornered, he would have talked and Lori knew that too. But some people believe, it, you know, vicious as she seems to be, they don't believe that she could hurt the children. Maybe perhaps because she didn't get the big lump sum of money when Charles was if you want to say killed or had an accident or in self-defense regardless he's gone she didn't get this money well she's angry and Kay Woodcock has come forward and said well if that's what you want Lori we'll give you the money just tell us where JJ is so Lori has been sitting in jail Chad Daybell is on the edge. All he, he doesn't realize that he, you know, he's not far from going to jail. And I can't wait because he, he not only that, guys, he got rid of his attorney and now he and Lori have the same attorney, which is odd. And I wish I knew more about law and I would talk about that. But another thing is, is Chad is supposed to be a witness. So according to prosecution, they have 48 to 50 witnesses that they have on their list. Chad Daybell being one of those, but we're trying to figure out. Now there's a law that could have uh, prevented Chad Daybell from um, being a witness against his spouse. But it turns out that that no longer is available to them because there's a child uh, when a child is at risk of being abused or in some way harmed that no longer applies with them so like I said I'm not big on law but now that he got rid of his attorney and they have the same attorney there's something going on with that that I don't quite understand but what I'm hearing and what I'm reading on that is this could backfire for them um, with them taking the same attorney because like I mentioned Chad Daybell is not behind bars Lori is and right now they don't have any um, additional charges 
so they're still she's still behind bars um, for the previous charges she was arrested for so right now we're just waiting because they are there's something going on with Tammy Daybell's uh, autopsy report we know this because they are keeping it hush hush so it's just a matter of time they just need time and they're putting stuff together to get past this part right now they're probably just trying to figure out where the children are according to Chad and Lori everybody's overreacting and it's not that big of a deal but tomorrow one of the I don't remember if it's inside edition or dateline one of them have something coming out where they actually interview several people which I haven't even had a chance to look up I've been going through so much guys so I really struggled to get this video out again <laughs> but I got it and I wanted to share a lot more but I just just don't I can't do it so guys let's just hope these children are found I'm just hoping that they're able to bring up enough to hold it against them to get them to talk I believe what Chad did by switching getting rid of his attorney that was a manipulation on Lori's part and we're gonna see that's gonna backfire for him I hope so guys I love you guys so much please share those kids faces keep talking about this story and uh, I went over my limit guys and I'll see you guys soon